So the, archi the, arch the architecture on your right hand side is inspired by Greek and Roman architecture. This was built by a design by um, a Spanish architect, Ricardo <laughs> Bofil. And um, this is monumental, not all the buildings, but if you look, you will see some, uh, a lot of columns and, uh, and capitals. And uh, well, it's uh, inspired by antiquity, well, by Roman and uh, Greek uh, days. And it was built here in the 19, uh, throughout the 1990s. And this was built to connect the old town to the river Les is a very small river once again but very important in the middle ages when goods were transported up and down the sea so there are four tram lines and this is one of them here they all have different colors the line one is blue and you've seen it by comedy square so very good public transports, and the cost for a ticket uh, is one euro for an hour. And you can take as many public transports as you wish. Uh, there are no metros, but a very good connection, uh, very good connections uh, all around uh, Montpellier. Very good uh, trams and buses. To the right is uh, the biggest Montpellier, a Mediatek. Um, all the students well there are several libraries this is the and this one is open on sundays mm -hmm. well in the afternoon it's open well, just very rare it's organized on the river less too it has an image of uh montpellier wants to attract yeah um more people uh, more students uh wants to have an image of young or very uh athletic, very uh, sports-oriented oriented, uh, uh, place, um, gay-friendly place to, uh, um, it's, um, yeah, it's a lot of sports events are organized, also cultural events, not only sports, so it's, uh, it's a very attractive place. Water supply comes from the river. No, the water supplies supply comes from different springs. Um, actually, the the spring of the river Les is also one of them. Um, and um, these days, the river Les is just they're, they're not even there aren't there aren't even any small boats um, sailing on it. Uh, there are water sports organized uh, on it, but this is. Let's say this is not even a canal where um, barges transport goods, but there are many canals built between Sète and Provence to connect the River Rhone to the, the Mediterranean Sea. And then there's this big canal which was in the past used to connect uh, transport goods from the Mediterranean Sea to the Atlantic Ocean. So let's say that the River Lesia is a minor uh, uh, place now. Uh, river. When it comes to water, yeah, we're lucky to have many springs around, many uh, rivers, well, river springs. Uh, in Montpellier itself, for very long, this is why you saw wells in the inner courtyards, is that the easiest way was to take uh, the underground water. So for instance, where I live, the well is not in the inner courtyard, it's in the cellar, it's very deep, but they managed to find water there. Until 250 years ago, when the, uh, an aqueduct was built using the taking the, the water from a, a local spring further west of Montpellier. When it comes to agriculture, uh, a lot of water is taken from the River Rhone, and this uh, is even uh, uh, used all the way down to Spain. Uh, some water. Uh, Canals uh, through the canals is transported uh, to Spain. So the main uh, yeah, for agriculture in Provence and in here, it's uh, a lot of the river, uh, the local rivers, but mostly the river Rome. Do the locals want more tourism, or are they are they fed up? 
No, they're not fed up here because tourism is not a big thing in Montpellier. Uh, no, it's not a big thing compared to uh, Provence or... Um, there are visitors, more and more, but... As you've seen, um, the shops are not... Oh, they're nice shops, but they're not only for the tourists. And uh, uh, well, the thing is that how people could be... The thing is that are the main industry here is agriculture and tourism, even if it's not that big yet. It could be even bigger, and we need to build more infrastructures, hotels, and... Um, so what else could, and, and research labs and small companies, but uh, tourism is, uh, I mean, even if people complain, but usually they don't work in tourism or they, they work in another field, but you know, in France these days, tourism is one of the main industries. It's very important to our country. Uh, I can't remember what's the percentage of our uh, net product it represents, but your net product, PEP, but it's very important, and especially in the, in the south of France, where there are not many factories left, and employment rate is high. Uh, it's essential to Provence, to the French Riviera. Here too, it plays a big part, and it will be, uh, well, we hope it will be increasing in the future. People are, are fed up with tourism world, fed up, especially in Barcelona. There are a lot yes. of protests yes. because, yeah, it's become just crazy. I mean, all tour operators just go to Barcelona. So it's really hell for the inhabitants because they have to queue everywhere. Prices went up but a great deal in a very short period of time. Um, no, it hasn't happened here. about too many tourism, tu tourists, sorry, about tourism, too many tourists. It's uh, a lot of people actually work during the, the high season and then close down the shops, the restaurants, the bars in winter. And uh, some make enough money to, to get by and, and, and having to work in the, in the winter month. So, uh, no, no, the, the worst is, uh, is Barcelona, some places in, in Switzerland where they complain because it's, it's difficult to, for the inhabitants to find uh, affordable uh, places to rent. And, um, yeah, I've heard of many places, but outside of France, in Switzerland, Spain with Barcelona, and in Italy, Venice, of course. Yeah, yeah Venice has lost I mean, more than 70% of its uh, inhabitants. And, uh, yeah, it is a pity because for the preservation of the buildings, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a problem. Attributed to the economy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's good and bad. It's become just. Right. I think there's a there's a level that shouldn't be. Uh, well, we should go beyond that certain level, a certain number of visitors, because then it really disrupts the the life in, in such places. So uh, I went there. I went to Barcelona once, and I've seen it queuing everywhere. Even I went in November. Yeah. So this time of the year. At the Sagrada Familia, there was a long line. Oh yeah, we couldn't even get there. I couldn't even get there. Well, after two hours, I just gave up. Uh, to visit a park, first time I bought tickets to visit Parc Guel. To visit a park, and I couldn't enter the park. I had to come back two, two or three hours later. Oh to visit goodness. a park with beautiful sculptures, but well, that was just very weird. And. Uh, yeah, and I booked an Airbnb, which is, yeah, I really did things. So I wouldn't do it like that again, but, uh, 
Yeah, it's just too much there. I totally understand that the people living there. And I won't go back to Barcelona. There are so many other nice places outside of Barcelona. Actually, much smaller, nice places. But yeah, I understand on a cruise you don't have a choice but <laughs> go to such places. But they're beautiful. I mean, I really love Barcelona. Very nice place, uh, restaurants and places to go out. And, uh, did you take what you call the cable, not, not the cable, no, no, the, the suspended, the, yeah, the funicular kind yeah, of? Yeah, we did not. Yeah, uh, I did. Uh, the queue was not too long, actually. It's the only thing I uh, did queue for a very we long time. We did that in the Alps, the gondola. Mm -hmm. That was scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in the Alps is uh, another dimension. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, so where is your next stop? Italy? Uh, no, we're going to uh, Marseille. Marseille, okay, nice. No, Monte Carlo and then Marseille. Monte Carlo and Marseille, okay. Marseille is a very uh, touristic place, but still has a spirit. Well, there are still a lot of a mix of populations. It's it's uh, it's very interesting. Marseille is uh, it's very touristic parts, but also. Uh, parts where tourists don't go to. It's it's very big, there's a lot to see, and I really like Marseille. It's one of my favorite places. Do you miss Lyon? Do I miss Lyon? Uh, yes and no. Lyon has, has grown much bigger over the last 10 years, and now when I go to Lyon, I find people all stressed out compared to Montpellier. Oh. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, what I miss are the good restaurants, because <laughs> there are a lot of... Lyon is famous for its uh, good restaurants, it's the capital of gastronomy, and it's, it's true that there are a lot of good products and very good places to go out to. Yeah, no, I, I prefer sun, sunshine, so here it's, it's just <laughs> perfect. Yeah, it's... Uh, of this Mediterranean weather, even if it's sometimes a bit windy and it can be very rainy, the rainy season is now, uh, we can have a lot of rain all of a sudden, uh, but it usually doesn't last very long. to be a long walk this afternoon and it's uh, it really has a spirit it's really uh, really pretty very different from of course what you will see in Marseille or Monte Carlo I see it was 330 kilometers uh, away from Barcelona, so 250 miles, about 250 miles away. Or 12 iron <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> much longer it looks. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, it was about 12 hours. 12 hours, uh, 12 yeah. hours. Oh, wow. Wow. I went on a cruise, when was it, a couple of years ago, starting from Marseille to Italy, to Rome, and then to Montenegro, and we went all the way down to Greece, but it was in, in April, and uh, the sea was very rough. 
48 hours, so less than 36 hours, we had to sail, and it was a rocking boat. Oh, yeah. Everyone was sick yeah. on board. We oh. were among the youngest. Uh, <laughs> we were, and I couldn't imagine what just people with walking difficulties or just being uh, not used to. Well, and it was really rough, and at one point the tables um, turned upside oh, down in the, in the in the in the dining room, and even the staff was surprised. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it rocked after a couple of days. We finished, we had finished the, the cruise. It was really, really something I had not expected on the Mediterranean Sea. But apparently, uh, yeah, it can happen. <laughs> so I'm not ready for another cruise, because I was, yeah, couldn't find any place, any, any to hide on the, the ship. There are also nice river cruises. I don't know if you've ever joined, uh, sometimes work for Viking um, on the Rhone River. And, uh, the cruise is very nice along the River Rhone because you get to see uh, Camargue, uh, uh, Provence, all the way up to Lyon and Burgundy. So it's a very popular cruise. Then there's a wine cruise along the River Garonne in Bordeaux, several uh, a year. Uh, and then, of course, the Rhine River and uh, the Seine River in Paris and Normandy. small river cruises along the Canal du Midi, starting from Saint to Toulouse. And then you can see the well, countryside of France, very uh, remote parts. Uh, it's very interesting to uh, just uh, not as famous as uh, Provence. Uh, other side, but the, really the southwest of France, if you like good food and authentic stuff, um, good wine, it's unbelievable. It's full of surprises and uh, beautiful, beautiful patrimony architecture, well, just so incredible villages.
free talk.